Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you the new startup file I've created for Blender 2.81 and onwards. If you remember last year, I created a startup file for Blender 2.8, which contained a bunch of useful resources. This included pre-made materials, outliner templates, useful text objects, world nodes, compositor nodes, render settings, and so on. So in this video, I'm just going to run you through the features of the new version of the file. Now remember this file is fully customizable, which means if there's something you don't like, you can remove it and then create your own version of the startup file. So let's take a look at what's included. First of all, in the lower left, we have the text editor. And in here, you'll see a collection of text files. There's a frame rate reference, a resolution reference, and useful Blender links. The frame rate reference contains a bunch of common frame rates with frames per minute conversions. The resolution reference contains a bunch of common resolutions for different aspect ratios, including for ultra wide video and one by one textures. The useful Blender links file will contain a list of websites. Each of these websites is relevant to the Blender community. Now let's take a look at the world nodes. In here we have support for HDRI mapping, including hue and saturation nodes, dodging color, and brightness and contrast. Support for a background color that is separate from the HDRI has also been included. By default, I've got it set on the dark gray, which is representative of the default Blender theme. A principled volume shader has also been added. By default, the color has been set to the same as the background override, but we can change this with the color override node and the mix color node. An HDRI file has already been prepackaged inside of this starter file, which comes from HDRI Haven. I recommend checking them out. From HDRI Haven, you can download a collection of free HDRI files. They have a variety of different resolutions available. For this file, I've just included the 1K version because that's the smallest one available. And this is to keep the file size of this starter file down. Now let's move over to the outliner. There are a few default collections, as opposed to the single collection that's usually present in the default Blender scene. Inside of scene 000, we have a few child collections called cameras, lighting, objects, and control. Keeping all of the scene objects inside of these collections will help with organization. You will easily be able to make copies of this scene structure by right-clicking the scene collection and choosing duplicate collection. Blender will automatically increment the number at the end of the name. This is good for rapidly prototyping different versions of the same scene. The contents of cameras, lighting, and objects are self-explanatory, but we'll visit cameras in more detail shortly. Inside of control is an empty object called World Origin. This is useful for modifiers where a pivot or mirroring object reference is required. It is disabled from view by default to prevent you from accidentally selecting it. Under the cameras subcollection, you will see three more collections called camera track, camera orbit, and camera free. Camera track has a constraint that forces it to always look at the target object. This is useful for tracking animations. Camera orbit has a camera that has been made a child of a pivot point, making it easy to do orbiting or rotational animations. And free camera is just a traditional loose camera that you can fly around with the walk mode. There are a few materials that come prepackaged in the file, each of which has been given the fake user tag, so it won't disappear when reopening the file. These are called emissive, glass, matcap, PBR, and transparent. You can see in the material nodes for each of these that there's a basic node setup for the effect. The emissive material uses an emission shader. The glass shader uses a principled BSDF with the standard index of refraction and appropriate alpha settings. The matcap material has a pre-made mapping setup to support matcap images, while also providing color shifting control. The PBR material is a basic principled BSDF shader with a metallic setup. And the transparent material contains a node setup for displaying image textures with alpha channels. The viewport objects have been made a pale blue by default. This is a personal preference and can be changed from the viewport shading settings. Looking at the EV render settings, ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections have been enabled by default. And moving over to cycles, the experimental feature set has also been selected. As for shared render settings, the look mode under color management has been set to high contrast. Again, this is a personal preference and will likely be adjusted for the type of scene. The default cube has been given a bevel modifier already applied. I like this for hard surface modeling, but you may not require it. Inside of the compositor, you will see a brightness slash contrast control, as well as hue shifting, hue correction, and color balance nodes. This will give you complete control over the presence of color in the rendered image. Using the EVPBR demo from a recent video, I can demonstrate this. Feel free to download the file from the link in the description. If there are any changes you want to make to the file, such as removing some of the features I've added, then feel free to do so. 
Then when you're ready, you can go to File, Defaults, and then save startup file. This will make sure Blender opens this file every time it starts. So that'll do it for this video, leave a like if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe for future updates. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.